Hello and thank you for listening. So in the past few videos, we've been looking at how to process and store uh, data that is stored outside of Python. We've seen how to interact with it for Network X, uh, with data in Excel, and also data in XML files. In this video, I want to introduce you to uh, working with data that you may come across in JSON files, which is JavaScript object notation. Uh, it's very, very good to become familiar with JSON files because they are used in a lot of Python applications. And working with JSON files is actually quite easy once you get used to uh, a couple basic functions. In this video, however, we're only going to really deal with one function, and that's the load function, because that's all we need. JSON files are formatted differently than XML files. They share a lot of the same uh, similarities with uh, the way in which we structure data in Python. That is with these squiggly brackets to delineate dictionaries and lists uh, delineated by uh, these just regular square brackets. Uh, I'm not going to go into depth about JSON files right now. I'm going to do a whole other series on working with JSON files for DH projects. In this video, I just want to introduce you rudimentarily to them so that you can understand how to go about uh, calling a JSON file, loading it into your Python script, and then working with it in a, uh, in a loop. So in order to do that, we are going to import this right here. You're just going to type in import JSON. And this is a built-in uh, module with Python. It's not third party. Uh, and here I've already gone ahead and just kept this. I have uh, set up our file name as this 08 sample data, js.json, which is this file right here. And what we're going to do is we're simply going to start calling our data. And the way we're going to do that is with our with expression. And we're going to say with open, uh, file, which is our Python or a JSON file, uh, we're going to set it to R. And R is going to allow us to read it. And a Pythonic way to in interact with a JSON file is to load it as JSON file. You can load this as F, you can load this as FP, you can really do whatever you want. Uh, I just typically try to remain consistent in my scripts, so I load it as JSON file. This is useful for uh, applications in which you are loading multiple files, it's easy to keep your uh, JSON files organized in this manner. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an object of data. And data is going to be equal to json.load, here's our load function, and we're going to load in that JSON file. And what that's going to do is it's going to create an object that's going to simply read all of the JSON data. Now right now we only have uh, two relationships structured. We've got uh, a dictionary formed, by setting up a key of relationship to a value, and that value is a list which consists of other lists. And these other lists are going to be our uh, relationships. And again, JSON files, kind of like XML files, allow us to structure data in much more nuanced ways than Excel. This is, however, a very, very basic structure uh, within a JSON file. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new object, and that's going to be the relationship. And that is going to be equal to data. And right now, data is a, is a list, and we are going, or a, a dictionary, and we're going to call anything that has uh, this. We're going to look for this specific uh, tag, if you will, the specific key of relationship. And we want to extract all the data that's in that. And the way we're going to do that is we can either print it off individually, in which case we'll just get all the uh, data collected in one place, or what we can do is we can iterate across it, which is what I prefer to do, across it with a for loop. So we're just going to say for i oop, in relationship. And what we're going to do is just to demonstrate this for you right now, we're going to simply print off i. And it should return for us a list, each of these lists. So we're going to print off i. And we have it right down here, Frank and Tom, Tom and Jerry. So what we're going to do now that we know that that works is we're going to do what we've done in all of our other um, uh, videos up to this point. We're going to append that names list up here, and we're going to append it with a tuple. Again, this is not entirely necessary. I do it for consistency. And we're going to convert I into a tuple so it's not looking like a list. Instead, it's looking like a, um, a tuple for network X. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add, once again, uh, edges from, calling that function, and we're going to do it simply as uh, names. 
And what we're going to do is we are going to uh, then draw G, which is going to draw our graph, and then we're going to plot dot show. Let's just make sure all that works. And what do you know? It does. So let's go ahead and add that label in there with uh, we want to do oops, wrong place with labels equals true. And that's going to allow us to see our names with that with label argument. And we see here that Jerry is connected to Tom and Tom is connected to Frank and Tom is functioning as a broker between uh, between Frank and Jerry. If we want to add more people, more relationships, it's quite easy. We simply add a comma and we can add to our list. We can put in Judy and Marge. I don't know why those names came to me. They just did. And now when we run our script, we should see some more individuals. And we do. We see Frank, Tom, and Jerry all functioning as their own little gathering of people, and Judy and Marge functioning as theirs. We can even start uh, making this a bit more complicated and making Marge, let's make Marge friends with Judy, or nope, uh, with Tom. This will make Tom super popular. <laughs> now when we run this, we see Tom functioning as this kind of intermediary between all of them, and we can make Tom even more popular Let's just do this for fun. We're going to make Tom and Judy even friends independently of Marge. And now what we see is Tom functioning as this supreme leader in this little network. Uh, everyone's kind of connected to him in some capacity. So that's how you import a JSON files data in Python. And that's how you interact with it. And if you're not familiar with JSON files, I really encourage you to look for other tutorials on YouTube uh, regarding them, especially regarding them uh, and how they're used in Python. Uh, my video series on JSON files in Python won't come out for probably a, another month or two. But for right now, if you encounter a JSON file, fear not, they are very easy to work with. Uh, you only need to know a few functions, especially if you're not dumping uh, data to a JSON file. If you're just trying to read a JSON file, this is how you're going to do it every single time. So play around with JSON files a little bit, play around with their data structures, um, and you'll find that they are very, very useful for storing large quantities of data. And I encourage you to also consider using them in Python because Python is able to work with JSON files more quickly, far more quickly than Excel and more quickly than XML files. So it's really good if you're working with huge quantities of data, like 100,000 nodes. Uh, this is something that I personally do. And you need to process all that data multiple times very quickly. JSON files might be the thing to do, uh, might be the thing to choose for, uh, for a data structure. So that's all for this video. In the next video, we're going to get back to working with Network X again. And we're going to start doing more complicated things from here on out. We're going to talk about these for loops I've been doing, go into depth about how we're supposed to structure those. We're going to then talk about how you can kind of change nodes to make them more representative of our data so that they can change color and size depending upon if the person is a male or female, if, it the, per if the node is an institution or a person. And we're also going to talk about how to change the size based on frequency. These are all the things that are coming up in the next few videos, so please stay tuned. And if you've been uh, enjoying these videos, please subscribe. Thank you for listening.